Hello beauties, welcome back to Beauty Within, where we chat about all things skincare, self-care, and healthy living to find our beauty within. Okay, <laughs> so who gets stressed here? Can we hear you all? <laughs> it's basically everyone, right? So it's definitely a natural and healthy part of life, but when it gets too overwhelming and everything seems to be falling apart at the seams and in shambles, which it often can, it seems like our skin also follows suit. Hmm. Well, you could be onto something. That's because stress can really affect our precious skin in two major ways. First is that it can accentuate already pre-existing conditions. So your eczema flares up again, or you get red blotchy areas that randomly show up on the neck or even the chest. Or your pimples stop popping up everywhere, even skin rashes and dermatitis starts rearing its head. And it's so interesting because this truly is showing us that the brain and the skin connection as well as the gut are all working together. So in this episode, we're really excited to be teaming up with Clean Academy to share an in-depth look on just how stress can be the trigger to most popular skin conditions that we hear about. And the four best ingredients that can be used during these times as our skin is particularly sensitive and in need of special TLC. As this is truly an inside out problem, we'll also be sharing with you guys six of our personal tips on how to curb anxiety and manage stressful times in our daily lives. Cause let's be real, it's all of 2020 and even into 2021. Yes. <laughs> At the core of it, the body will register stress as inflammation, and that's because it perceives it as a threat. This will trigger different hormones and parts of our bodies to react in ways it doesn't normally act. So now our balance is completely thrown off. So when the internal system is thrown off, we're gonna start seeing adverse changes externally. And it goes both ways too, because sometimes we freak out from seeing our skin suffer, which then causes the mental turmoil. And so we're kind of stuck in this vicious loop that we can't get out of. I think we can all relate to that, right? Don't know how to help ourselves. It's just like, <laughs> yes. And we go in depth about how this whole system works on Clean Academy with Biosan. So make sure you head over and watch that video for the full story. Yes. So before we get into products, when are you the most stressed? And what does your skin look like when it's stressed? Good question. So I think I'm most stressed when, you know, when you push things along or too far and then it all kind of culminates at once. Push things off. Push things off, yes. So it builds. Oh, it's under the rug. Yeah. And then the dust bunny gets so big that there's a lump and you can yes. no longer walk around it. Yes. And you're like, why did I do this to myself? And then you're frantically trying to do like everything and you're like, no, I'll never do this again, but proceeds to do it Life again. Life of an Aquarius, <laughs> tell ya. And then, so what that turns up on my face is definitely breakouts, but also like an even texture. I'll get dry and then I'll get oily. It's so interesting how yours is like putting things off and it gets clogged up. Yeah. Clogs up your system oh. like it clogs up your pores. It's symbolic, I tell ya. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, what about you? I think for me, it's mostly self-imposed stress. Mm. It affects my diet, I lose my appetite, and then I get insomnia, like I just can't sleep for the life of me. Thoughts? Yes, just thoughts are in my head. I can't sleep until 2, 3 a.m. and I wake up. My skin is just so dull. Mm. It's like gray. Starting off with an ingredient that we absolutely love, and it's squalane. Squalane's an oil that contains lipids and fatty acids to keep the skin moisturized and well-nourished, and as you may know, our skin is made up of these fats and lipids to keep the skin barrier protected while keeping all of that hydration and moisture within the skin. Squalane is great for this reason, not to mention that it closely resembles our skin's natural sebum production, otherwise known as squalane. And it works by sealing in the moisture, lubricating the skin and rebuilding the skin barrier when it is broken down and compromised. It's also rich in antioxidants, which can help reverse UV damage, balance oil production without clogging 
clogging the pores, help reduce wrinkles and scars, and even with hyperpigmentation. Now you might be wondering, what's the difference between squalane and squalene? Because they do sound really similar. Squalene is a compound that's naturally found in our sebum and produced by our sebaceous glands. Squalene is also difficult to formulate into our skincare products because it's unstable and can easily oxidize. And this happens in our skin as well. When our skin is under free radical damage or UV exposure, the squalene in our sebum can oxidize and actually clog up our pores, which can create acne that we are familiar with. So in order to make it stable enough to use in products, the oil goes through hydrogenation, which converts squalene into the stable and long-lasting form, squalane. Ta-da! And essentially, you can think of squalene as the unstable teen and squalane as more stable older sister. Youth. <laughs> Here's the thing about squalene. Back in the day, it was traditionally sourced from shark liver since they were known to have incredibly high levels of squalene and were widely used to treat wounds and other skin concerns. But in recent years, skincare industries found a way to source squalene from plant-based ingredients such as sugarcane, rice bran, wheat germ, olives, and even amaranth seeds. Now getting into some product recommendations, one of the brands that's most well known for their squalene products as well as other ingredients Biosigns! This is the Squalene Lactic Acid Resurfacing Night Serum. And it's crazy because all their formulations are so incredibly fast absorbing and milky and... Gentle. Gentle! Yeah. So lactic acid is already such a great gentle chemical exfoliant without, you know, the heavy hitting effects of glycolic. In here, there's the sugarcane derived squalane. There's also 10% of the lactic acid, but it works together so beautifully because when you're breaking out, you don't want to completely incinerate and dry out your acne, which was a problem that I used to do when I was younger and more just like, get it off! You want something hydrating that's going to rebuild your skin barrier as well as help fight off the acne causing bacteria and that's what this does for me because it's this like lightweight cloud. It's almost like a gel moisturizer. Yes. It's also got clover which apparently helps to boost the effects of lactic acid and its exfoliating benefits. So all of this is just really gently loosening the dead skin, unclogging the pores and revealing that like underneath bright skin. So when you use this, it's mostly for PIH, right? Yeah. If your skin is good, you're not gonna use this. Yeah, normally when it's good, I'll just stick with like hydration. Mm -hmm. And then when you start feeling like it's dull or you start feeling that it's kind of off, which is why we always talk about reading your skin every day and night, that's when I'll start like vamping up to these kind of more mm. gentle chemical exfoliants. How about your dull skin? For my dull skin, we all know vitamin C is a fun favorite. Vitamin C. And the vitamin <laughs> vitamin C paired with squalane. I think it's the same thing you said, right? Like a heavy hitting ingredient mm. paired with squalane. It's just super nourishing. So this is their dark spot serum and it has 10% vitamin C derivative, which is 3-O-ethyl ascorbic acid. So it's a lot more gentle on the skin. It feels like nothing. Mm. It's just like a hydrating serum. And as with your milky serum, this is the exact same thing. Just Biosense with their serums. Like I've rarely ever seen a milky vitamin C serum yeah. ever. Yes. Ever. And it just blends so beautifully into your skin, but still having that like protection because of the squalane. An interesting ingredient in here is shiitake, but not just any shiitake, it's white shiitake, white shiitake. which is a new kit on the block to help lighten discoloration mm. of your skin. Yeah. yeah. There's also these two, which are our favorites. Like Ro has been using this pretty little baby for a while. And this was a new one as well for me. And it was like instantly Mists in love. are great. They're amazing. You know what happened a few days ago? I already pumped serum onto my hands mm. and I realized I didn't put toner. Mm -hmm. so I was like, oh, what mist do I have? Ah, oh, yes. And then you just spray it. Cause you don't need both hands. You can yeah. just spray it on directly, pat it and then still not waste the serum. Yes. Wonderful inventions. <laughs> Yes. Like whoever came up with the spray form of things, my God, Nobel Prize winning. <laughs> <laughs> but this mist just reminds me of the dual phase dual, ones mm -hmm. without actually having an oil layer. Like the way that they have formulated the squalane in this is so delicious, I tell you. Your <laughs> skin feels like soft and supple and cushiony. Yes. Much like the Laneige cream skin yes. without being too thick. And this is what I believe most people know Biosense as. It's what I know Biosense as. Mm. It is their squalane and vitamin C rose oil. I've been using this for years now. It's just 
a beautiful, luxurious, lightweight oil that blends beautiful into your skin. You can either mix it in your moisturizer or pat it in afterwards. There's also the Good Molecules Squalane Oil, which is made with 100% plant-derived squalane. So The Ordinary also has 100% plant-derived squalane as well as their cleansing balm oil. Beautiful. So good. So the interesting thing is, I feel like because I'm used to The Ordinary Squalane cleanser, when I tried Biosances, it was so different. Oh, they're oil. Because one of them is more of like a balmy texture, even though it comes out of a tube, and you still kind of have to work it in, and there's a little bit of a pull, versus the squalane cleansing oil is just like, Oh my god, that one just slips and slides yeah. everywhere beautifully, yeah. Depends on the texture that you're going for. I think that's why some people prefer balm yeah. versus oil versus that ordinary one is like a moisturizer yeah. kind of consistency, yeah. but we it's love it. It's like a sorbet. It. Yeah. And of course, there's one of my favorite moisturizers of all time that I've been kind of neglecting because we're trying a bunch of other products. This is Paula's Choice Omega Complex Moisturizer. It's most known for its Omega Complex, Omega 3, 6, and 9. And what gives it that rich whipped texture is the squalane, shea butter, olive fruit, metafoam seed oil, as well as linoleic and linolenic acids. So this really is one of the most whipped, like whipped mm. moisturizers I've ever used. This one was like a, a moussey kind of velvet whip, yeah. right? It's a texture you've never felt before. You're like a cloud. It's like souffle. Ah, souffle. <laughs> so moving on to ceramides. <laughs> ceramides are waxy substances that are produced naturally by our bodies and keep our skin protected and moisturized. And you can think about skin cells as little roof tiles and the ceramides are the cement that are holding these bricks together and forming their shape. They're made with a combination of fatty oils, lipids, and cholesterol, which help create a watertight barrier that keeps external environmental pollutants out and moisture in. Mm -hmm. And in fact, ceramide levels are what's used to measure how healthy the skin is. But when ceramide levels are low, this is the indicator that your skin barrier is damaged and weakened. It's like the big bat wolf being like, oh, and everything just falls And apart. then it rains and it storms and it pours and you're unprotected. And if you're someone who has atopic dermatitis or eczema, rosacea, the ceramide levels are found already lower in people with those concerns. So you wanna like even more amp up on ceramides. <laughs> Me. And here's a fun fact. Just like our collagen levels depleting over time as we age, our ceramide levels do the same. Pew. According to Dr. Joyce Davis, you lose about 40% of the ceramide levels by the time you're in your 30s, and by your 40s, you lose 60% of your skin's natural ceramides. Hmm. So not only is elastin, collagen, also ceramides are going down. Bye-bye. <laughs> We have some examples that will hopefully color this a little more fun <laughs> from the Dr. Ja. This is their ceramide line. This is made for people with dry skin and I can vouch that this works wonders, especially if your skin is flaky, super dehydrated, super dry. This is the cream mm -hmm. and that is the toner. Even the toner is so thick and juicy. It's like a serum. Yeah. Wow. It's beautiful. Yeah. So then there's also another brand that you might have heard of, CeraVe. So this is probably my favorite drugstore brand. This is their hydrating cream to foam cleanser for normal to dry. But what I realized about the CeraVe cleanser is that anyone can use it, yeah. right? Don't just like look at this and be like, oh, it's for dry skin, I can't. Because I also used this one and it's beautiful. It's like a Is milky... this the one that's like you're applying moisturizer on your face to wash off? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it feels like a lightweight moisturizer. It's not gonna take off makeup or anything, but it's just like you feel like it's building <laughs> your health back. And with all the CeraVe products, you'll find that they have a special concoction of three different types of ceramides and also, you know, your sodium hyaluronates and glycerin for hydration. It really is designed to support the skin to build it back you know, that thatched roof back to normal. Thatched roof. Yeah. Next, we have Inkyless Ceramide Night Treatment. This is like a gel. It's funny because all the ceramide consistencies are this slightly milky mm. kind of texture. You can see how this would really like trap in hydration because it almost has like a nourishing tack to it. In here, there's 3% ceramide complex as well as glycerin. There's also squalane and jojoba seed oil, which gives it that like 
extra nourishment yeah. that you feel on your skin. So how I would use this in my routine is I would cleanse, tone, serum as usual, put this on, and then moisturize. Just because my skin is Whoa. It needs it. Whoa. You can for sure stop at this oh, yeah, as a moisturizer. Sure. So you can mm. use this as a moisturizer. Mm. And there's also Pharmacy's Honey Halo Ceramide Moisturizer. That's one of my favorite. It's a ceramide infused, buttery smooth moisturizer that feels like luxurious honey on the face. Like legit, it's like so, so luxurious. Mm. And it sinks beautifully into your skin and gives you a beautiful, beautiful glow. Mm. I think honey as an ingredient is just like, and then with it's ceramide, so it's like, yeah. Next ingredient, something that we all love to be friends with, our BFF niacinamide. Niacinamide is a water-soluble vitamin that's non-acidic, non-irritating, and works well with all skin types. Yeah. And on the skin, it plays many helpful roles that do things like brighten up the skin tone, help with discoloration, help with hyperpigmentation, help to minimize pores, control sebum. That's why it is such a popular ingredient. It can also help strengthen the skin barrier by reducing tool, transepidermal water loss, while simultaneously increasing the moisture content in our skin. Because there's an endless amount of favorites between the both of us for niacinamide, we're just gonna just really tease out our favorites of all times. Mm. Starting with Beauty of Joseon. This is a beautiful lightweight serum that's made up of 60% propolis extract as well as 2% niacinamide. And all the Beauty of Joseon serums are so easy to use, I think. Are. Oh my god. The texture is like, it's that beautiful goop, but isn't yes. sticky, fast absorbing. There's also like a green tea one and also the ginseng yes. one that have slightly different ingredients. Some of them also include niacinamide, but all of them across the board, very similar It's very texture. interesting combinations too. I think it was like green tea and panthenol. Yeah. And then we have Peach and Lily Glass Serum. So this one's actually the moisturizer. Ooh. Uh, the gel moisturizer yes. they came out with, but it also contains some niacinamide. But the OG was kind of the glass serum. So in that one, there's peach extract, that's full of vitamins like A, B, C, and K, as well as fatty acids to help rebuild the skin barrier. And anything that comes from Peach and Lily is also designed for super sensitive skin. It's a beautiful clear gel yeah. serum that it's one of my favorites, my go-to mm. still. It's like intensely day. hydrating. It is, it's so hydrating. It really gives you the glass skin look. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I found that with that one, it was more subtle. Then it's an overall brightening of your skin complexion rather than like targeting specific dark spots that you've had or that is just yes. popped up. And then a more affordable option is from Good Molecules. They have a niacinamide toner, which we've talked about for ages now, super affordable. And it's got other skin brightening ingredients, including 3O ascorbic acid, which is the same derivative that we found in biosances. There's also arbutin, licorice root extract, cocoa seed extract, saccharomyces, ferment filtrate as well as sodium hyaluronate. So it's hydrating as well as brightening. This one's really good. The next ingredient is snail mucin. And if we want to talk about snail mucin and how it's extracted mm. with the laughing gas, the ha 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 ha, and then they just excrete, right? We need more of this in our lives, stress lives. We need more gas. Happy, Happy gas. gas. <laughs> we want to be snails. <laughs> I was just thinking my hands also excrete probably like hand Does it excrete <laughs> more when you laugh? It's just any time really. Like now. And if we want to be a bit more precise, snail mucin is also collected while they're in a sauna. It's like laughing gas and... Oh my God, they're living their best lives. They're in a sauna. Snail mucin is found to heal wounds, moisturize the skin, and soothe irritation. It's rich in skin calming, helping ingredients like allantoin, manganese, copper, peptides, collagen, elastin, and hyaluronic acid. It's even got a natural source of glycolic acid to gently, very gently exfoliate and help with hyperpigmentation. Very cool. Causerax has the Advanced Snail 92 All-in-One Cream. It is a rich cream that's slightly stretchy from the snail mucin. It contains 92% snail secretion filtrate. Because so much of the product is made up of the snail mucin, it does have that stringy texture mm -hmm. that I absolutely love. And it's so good. Is it the one where you peeled it up and it's like... And it's like... <laughs> yeah. Mm. 
Beautiful. But then it's funny because it just spreads over and doesn't leave much of that light. Oh, it's sweetness. not sticky, it's not goopy, it just blends and absorbs so nicely into your skin. I think that was a mental hurdle for me at the very beginning. I'm like, snail really? But it really is enjoyable to use. Yeah. Like the Myzon Ample Serum Cleansers, they're all super hydrating. And we said the cleanser was like a nine on the pH scale, yeah. which should be like theoretically very drying, but it's like, it restores actually a lot of suppleness to the skin afterwards. And there's also the Benton BHA Aloe Toner, which also has snail mucin in it. And I love this one because even though it's a toner, it's almost sitting in between a toner serum in that it's kind of like blip, blip, Especially with the aloe. So satisfying, dude. Yeah. Aloe and the snail mucin would be like. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, there's way more, but you know, we'd be here till we're in our grave. Until like 2052. <laughs> <laughs> we really, again, want to stress that 90% of our stress is not the stressor itself, but how we deal with that stressor. Correct. How many times can you say stress in a sentence? I love that sentence. So basically it's not about like what's actually causing you pain, it's about how you're mentally perceiving it. Yes. Right? So here are some of our favorite things to do when life gets overwhelming. First one, meditation. Yeah. Near and dear to our heart. Something that I've been neglecting, but <laughs> this is why also I feel this way probably. <laughs> The simple act of meditating initiates the body's relaxation response, which activates our body's parasympathetic nervous system, which then decreases the cortisol that we were mentioning and also inflammation that spikes when we get stressed. So it's like whoosh, compress. Yes, try to find a spot where you're going to sit quietly for five to 10 minutes a day and really go through your thoughts like you would your closet. If something comes into your mind that doesn't give you joy, put energy into discarding that thought. Thank it, be grateful for it, but be like, I no longer need you. You do not serve me well anymore, but thank you for being here. Thank you for being an inhabitant of my mind. Yes. You may leave now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so noted on meditation, what else? <sighs> Breathing exercises are perhaps one of the most basic, obvious, and potentially eye-rolling activities to be suggested, but not many people realize the power of how much the amount of oxygen in our body can affect our mood and concentration. Did you know how much stagnant air is in the lungs that we're not using? And it's the same as when you do get stressed, you have very shallow breaths. Oh yeah, it's like, <laughs> not like, you know, in Pilates, they're like, yeah. <laughs> no, that's fine. Yeah, I think you can tell Mm. When you're like really breathing in, you feel it. Mm. And then when you're breathing in shallow, it's just going maybe like this much, as opposed to when you're like really breathing deeply into mm -hmm. your... And research from Harvard Medical School shows that taking slow, deep breath triggers the relaxation response again and can stop the psychological aspect of stress from being translated into the physical inflammation that we see on our skin. And it activates a portion of the brain that triggers the feeling of calm. It's science, people. Yes. It's kind of like perspective and also helping you be present mm -hmm. because I think with most of our days when we are the most stressed, we're so in our head yeah. that when we focus on something that's outside of our mind, it's like, oh, like there's actually a separation. Like yeah. I'm not my thoughts. Yeah. I'm not this thing that I th think that I am. The monster in yeah. my head. Uh -huh. Yeah. Another thing that we tend to do when we're stressed is we neglect our healthy daily habits. If you realize you're doing things like touching your face, you're like nervously picking, whether it's the body, face, hair, these are the areas that you'll tend to see it breaks out as well. So it's doing you like a disservice by doing so. I'm sold. <laughs> Tell me more. <laughs> because you're all such unique and beautiful humans and we're all so different, everyone deals with stress differently. Some people may actually find comfort in like picking their skin, picking their hair or like just, we all have these different like ticks or antics that we yeah. might have when we are stressed. So if that is you, just be mindful of that and to try to do less of that. Which leads us into our sleep cycle. We just made a post on the circadian rhythm on our Instagram, which tells us all about our body's natural clock and the system, which very intricately heals itself throughout the day at specific times of the day. So make sure that you check out that post because we have all the little infographics on how it works, the different times of the day, the different organs that are being you know, nourished at certain times. 
Moving on to our diet. Stress can actually prompt our bodies to produce internal free radicals. So in terms of preventing that from happening, we have to load up on antioxidants because only antioxidants can fight the free radicals that leave skin clear, calmer, brighter, and even more toned. So try load up on things like vitamin A, C, salmon, omega fatty acids, as to santhan, polyphenols, and green tea. There's like an abundant source where you can find foods and drinks. And last, there's daily movement and exercise. Exercise increases antioxidants as well. Behold, the body produces yet another popular skincare ingredient on its own. And this lowers the cortisol levels, meaning fewer breakouts and stronger skin barrier. If you're exercising outdoors, it's even better because you're breathing in fresh air again. And we really just think that shifting perspective, like a new environment, looking at a tree, looking at the grass, lying down, looking at the sky, all all of this really does help with the mind. But the actual last tip is, if you need to cry, just cry. Because <laughs> sometimes that's all it takes. It is. Yeah. It does make you feel a lot better after. Yeah. Just know that you're not alone and we all get stressed and it's okay and there's many things we can do to get us back on track. So, Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. We always want to mention that it is a combination of what we can do mentally, you know, in our lifestyle, as well as really fantastic products that can help rebuild the skin barrier. So if you have questions, leave them below. We want to thank Clean Academy again for partnering up with us so that we can share all these awesome tips with you guys. And check out the video that's on their channel because we go deep into just how stress can show up and work its way through our body to show up as like inflammation. Yeah. With that, thank you guys so much for watching this video. We'll see you in the next episode.